Hey guys, what is up? It's your pal Dave from notesandvolts.com. Welcome to part six of the Teensy Synth tutorial. Today, we're going to add a filter. This is actually a pretty simple uh, tutorial as far as the programming goes. And as you can see, here's our, our uh, control panel. And I've added these two faders to a filter sub patch. Now we've done a lot of this, so I'm not gonna show you how to make this, but basically here's what it looks like inside. So I've got my two sliders that are just identical to the other ones we've made and I've assigned them to MIDI CC 111 and MIDI CC 112 and I've labeled them frequency and res for resonance. And that's it. Very simple. Once again, you can click the link below the video and download this panel. And here's what it sounds like. So if I play a note and I bring the fader up, Here's our filter. And I can also add resonance to it. All right, pretty cool, sounds good. Now you may also notice I'm using a different controller this time because I've been getting a lot of questions about whether you can assign our panel controls to a MIDI controller with some uh, pots. And sure, no problem. So this controller has eight pots and all I did was use the editing software that came with this controller to assign this pot to MIDI CC number 111, which if you remember is our frequency control, and this one to 112, which is our resonance control. Now another cool thing this controller does is it comes with a built-in arpeggiator. So you can see this control is controlling my filter. And this one's controlling my resonance. Pretty cool. I like it. All right, so let's take a look at how the software for this project works. So once again, we're going to go to pjrc.com slash teensy slash GUI and use the Teensy Library audio design tool to add our filter module into our synth. So this is what we have so far. Uh, three waveforms going into a mixer, the output of the mixer going into our envelope generator, and then the output of that going into our output chip on our audio board. And remember, this guy is just to control the audio chip. Now to add the filter module, we're just going to break the connection between the mixer and the envelope. And we'll move this out a bit. Now we'll scroll down until we get to the filter section. And we're going to choose the one just labeled filter. And let's pull that up. And if you notice, we've got a couple of inputs and three outputs. So we need to be careful that we use the correct ones. So if you select the filter module, the information panel will show up here. And you can see under audio connections, it's telling us what the different ports do. So the input, input zero is the signal to filter and input one is frequency control. So we want input zero because we want 
our signal to go into the filter. So I'll just draw a line from the mixer output to in zero on the filter. Now the output we have out zero is low pass output, out one is band pass output, and out two is high pass output. So we are gonna use the low pass output, which is out zero, and then we'll connect a line to our envelope generator. And there you go, pretty simple. Now, once again, you don't actually need to do this because I've already done it and uploaded it to the example program, but I just want you to be aware of how to do it. So once we're all done, we'll just go to export and there's our code. And we can just copy and paste it into our Arduino sketch. And here it is already included in our example program, which is Teensy Synth Part 6 Filter Test, which you can download in the link below the video. But just to show you, I'll erase all this. And I'll just paste what we just created in the design tool. And there you go. And there is our filter module labeled Filter 1. All right. So... All we really need to do in our program is what we've been doing all along, which is to take the MIDI input from our control panel, which if you remember outputs on MIDI CC 111 and MIDI CC 112. And we're going to add that to our my control change function. So I've added two new cases. Here's 111 and 112. And hopefully by now, these formulas look familiar. So what we're doing as always is we're taking our input, which is 0 to 127, and we're converting it into the range of numbers we need to control our device. And in this case, we're controlling filter one dot frequency and filter one dot resonance. Now, the numbers you need for this are a little strange and let's take a look at them a little closer. So if we go back to our design tool, this is showing the parameters for the filter object. So let's look at frequency. So filter frequency sets the filter's corner frequency when a signal is connected to the control input. The filter will implement this frequency when the signal is zero. So basically if you look, that parameter accepts a frequency. And through some testing, I found that 0 to 10,000 hertz is kind of a good range, a good musical range. So what I did in my program was use our standard scaling thing that we've used a million times. If you're not familiar, please go back and watch the previous episodes. But we've gone over this a million times. As always, we take in our MIDI value, 0 to 127. We multiply that by our div 127 variable to convert it into a percentage. And then we multiply that by the maximum output number we want. And in this case, it's 10,000. So that will give me 0 to 10,000 hertz, depending on my input value, which is coming from MIDI CC controller number 111. Now let's take a look at the resonance control. Now if you look here, it says set the filters resonance Q ranges from 0 0.7 to 5.0. That's a little different. It's not a 0 to 5 range. It's a 0 0.7 to 5 range. So we'll have to modify our little scaling equation a little bit, but it's still pretty simple. So once again, this should look familiar. I've got my input scaling function. So I'm scaling the input 0 to 127 into an output of 0 to 4.3. So why 4.3 when we said we wanted 5.0 as our maximum? So if you notice, I've added plus 0.7 to the result of this. And that's going to lift my 0 point from 0 to 0.7. So if this returns a value of 0, when I add the 0.7, it's going to lift it up to 0.7. So 0.7 is the lowest value I'm going to get. So to get my, my maximum range of 0.5, remember that we're going to add 0.7 to the result of this. 
so I had to subtract 0.7 from my maximum range. So if I have the slider up at 127, I'm going to get 4.3 out. We're going to add 0.7 to that, which will give me my maximum range of 5. So basically this equation just takes my input range 0 to 127 and converts it into a range of 0.7 to 5. And that's all there really is to this, this part. It's very simple. So once again, once you got everything done, you go to Tools. You make sure your MIDI board is set correct, 3.2. You make sure your USB is set to MIDI. And you just click Upload. And once again, you'll see the sketch compiling here at the bottom. Hopefully we'll get no errors. And here's our Teensy Loader. It uploaded and rebooted and everything should work okay. And remember, you may need to power cycle your board. So we'll unplug it. Plug it back in. Now we'll open up our control panel. And go to Media, MIDI Settings. And we'll set our input as our MPK, which is this guy, and the output, Teensy MIDI, apply, OK. And we should get some notes out. And remember, I mapped the filter controls to these pots. So I can control it from the, the panel. Or I can control it from the pots themselves. Pretty cool. And also keep in mind, instead of using a hardware controller, you could hook this up to Ableton or any software you like and control it through the software. And before we go, I just want to play with the arpeggiator one more time because it's so much fun. Alright guys, that's going to do it for this episode. Thanks for watching. Make sure you come back for part 7. Once again, I'd like to thank my supporters on Patreon for helping to make this whole thing possible. I'll see you next time. <laughs>